All right, welcome back to the Tribe Cast, where we guide you, encourage you, and push you to move forward to whatever the next step may be in your life. Mm-hmm. But let's start it off with I'm Tavares. I'm Denisha. And let's just get straight into it. Today, we are going to be talking about letting go of your old self to become the new version of yourself. You yeah. forgot what it was. That's why you looked over there. Yeah. That's no, right. I knew what it was, but I want to make sure I said it right. <clears throat> okay, so you want to go first? Nah, you go first. Let go of your old self. Okay, I'm going to talk <laughs> about a story, because I feel like you said a story before we get into it. Um, I'll talk about, okay, so I used to be the type of person, it was hard for me to say no. A lot. It was very hard for me to say no, because I always wanted to help people. And, you know, that's how I was was raised to do. My family is very giving, and that's what I've seen. So that's what I do. Um, Until he assisted me and showed me why it's important to say no. And it was not easy for me to do it, honestly, because it's like you're so used to saying yes, yes, yes. You feel bad for not saying yes. And you're like, damn, if I say no, then they're going to X, Y, and Z. But in reality, even if they X, Y, and Z, that doesn't matter. Because you have the right to say no. Um, I'm trying to think of a time where it was hard. Well, I can think of a time. But I don't know if I want to say that time. Well, I kept doing something over and over again. And I always say yes, and I always gave into it and I at the and then I eventually got comfortable enough to say no and that was not easy but over time no got easier than than yes so <laughs> yeah I know what the situation you're talking about too. yeah so it is what it is yeah. I'm glad I know because it's a boundary Her, learning boundaries is very hard because when you grow up you know you learn to a certain extent like mm-hmm. helping others that's what you're supposed to do so, and then you now you're saying basically no to helping him. You feel like, oh, I'm doing something so wrong. Yeah. But it's not wrong to say no. There's a difference between being, like, selfless and selfish, I feel like. Selfish. Selfless and selfish. Yeah. yeah. Well, because every time you say yes to a situation you're not comfortable with, mm-hmm. you're saying no to yourself. Mm-hmm. So, at what point do you allow yourself to feel how you feel and to be comfortable with no I don't know it's just yeah what do you think about it what I think about what 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 just yeah what I just said do you have a story about it about me having to say no yeah uh I answered your first question first which was uh what do I think about it I think it's necessary to say no yeah for yourself, because sometimes you just keep saying yes, you just affect yourself in the end, and the other person would just move on with their life while you're being affected. Because you saying yes to something all the time can affect your day. It can affect For sure. your time. It can affect your schedule. But by you allowing that to affect you and knowing, it's not even always about what people can give, but knowing that that person will not give you the same time of day. Yeah then it's it's not a it's not a balance for your mental health yeah i would say um so i feel it's necessary to say no and who i was gonna say who cares what people think of you when you say no because it don't matter but to a certain extent i mean yeah but i'm saying for when you have to say no you know this is the time I need to say no. So yeah. it's not like you're saying it out of spite. It's not you're saying yeah. it to... You're not saying it to harm them. You're saying it to help you because you're like, I can't do it. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong with saying I'm unable to do it because some people will see... like their, Some people will see their time is more precious than your own time. And that part. You have to... That's why it's important to say no with certain things because you have to know the value of your time versus their time. Because if you keep putting their time first, they're not going to see, they're not going to think, oh, Denisha just putting her time 
back and she's put in mind first, they're not going to take that into consideration. They're just going to see next time you say no, why? Why can't you do it? I don't understand. That's not, one, that's not like you because you normally say yes. But they're not going to say you normally say yes. They're going to just say that's not like you because now you're doing something that's not familiar to them. Mm-hmm. They expect it. So when you take away the expectation, that's what makes them feel that, feel some type of way, which has nothing to do with you because they shouldn't have the expectation on you. Nope. And not to always, because that's, that's <clears throat> selfish selfish of them. Yeah. They'd be like, how you going to say no to me? Yeah. Yeah. And some people don't take their time into consideration at all. They just see, I need this, I need this, I need this. They just so into themselves. They don't think outside and think about, am I doing, is that too much to ask? Yeah. Without without saying it like in a smart way, but like seriously think like, is that too much to ask for her to do? Instead of saying, oh, can you just do this? Can you just do this? Can you just do this? Because it's helping fulfill what you need to complete, but not thinking that you're taking away what she needs to complete. Yeah. They only think about what they got to do. Yeah. They only think about everything in their life at this moment and not n- nothing else. Nobody else. So, yeah. Say no. Um, and stand <laughs> on it. Uh, I like to say that. I and know. stand on it. Um, now, a story for me when I had said no. Or even a story that has to do with the... I have, a, I have one. Okay. All right, one of my no's, <clears throat> it was hard, too, because, of course, me, well, I'm a logical person, too, so I, it's what you think makes sense. Like, um, okay, boom. Like, I was letting somebody use something of mine over and over again, right? And then I was like, okay. It makes sense. They need it. Let them use it. And then I get it back and then I'll use it. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, it makes sense because it makes the most sense for me to do it because of my time. Mm-hmm. But just because it makes sense and I have the time doesn't mean that I should give that time. Mm-hmm. But I was, I continue to give that time. Until I started to see how that was starting to affect me. Because when certain things was happening, it's like certain things weren't taken into consideration. So I didn't agree with that. So I was like, huh, okay. So I see how th- how this situation is, okay. And then how I have to figure it out. And then when it happens over and over again, that's when I was like, okay, no, 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 no. That's when logic, my logic started to break. Like, yo, no. It makes sense, but that doesn't make sense. You don't have to do that because it makes sense. And yeah. look like the bad guy if you don't do it. It's okay. Like, tell yourself, like, it's okay if I do this. And whatever someone else have in it, theirs crumble. Because it's not your fault. What you have isn't, it isn't your role to play. For somebody else. Does that make sense what I just said? I think so, but you can elaborate on it. So what I meant by it isn't your role to play for someone else is your role isn't to make somebody else's life better all the time. Yeah. I understand you want to help people, you want to do that. Okay, you feel your role is to help. Granted. But you have to also think if you're doing it over and over and over and over again, are you really helping or are you just cru- what crutching the situation? Yeah, or handicapping them. Yeah. Because so, they're so used to it. And I was doing the latter. I was crutching. I wasn't helping. So I was like, I need to remove this crutch. It's going to hurt. You're going to fall. <laughs> but it can help you get up. It just depends on how you take it and how you... It depends on how you look at the situation and however you look at that situation, that isn't my problem. That isn't, it isn't me. I'm not here to think for you. I'm not here to move for you. I am here to be there for you when you're down, but at the same time, I have to really see. Well, no, no, I don't want to say I have to really see because not me having to really see, but I have to know 
that this is the time for me to help. There's a time for me to help, and there's a time for me to sit back. Oh, people call that tough love. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So you have to you have to give that tough love because people have to go through things and make it out for them to see certain things. If uh-huh. you just play the crutch, they're just gonna see. Okay, I'm about to trip. Catch me. Oh, I'm about to trip. Catch me. I'm about to fall. Catch me. Instead of just falling, seeing how it feels to fall, see what you hit as you fall because when you fall and that's experience. Yeah. So as you're falling, you'll learn not to do that again or how to get up from it. So yeah, if I'm crutching you, you're not going to know how to get up from it. Mm-hmm. So I have to let you fall. And I know it, it's hard to watch people fall. And it's it it's hard, hard when you see it. Like, you know you're going to fall right there. There's a hole, a deep hole right there. That thing going to catch your leg. But I can't say nothing. Because you have to know how to see those things for yourself. And you know, that's why it's funny that you said that. What? When we was test driving the uh, the Tessie, mm-hmm. and I didn't say anything about the time. Oh, yeah. And I said, no, I don't have to say nothing. Yeah. What's, what for? Yeah. Everybody knows that <clears throat> the time that we have this for. Yeah. And you know, you could have still said something for what? That has to do with that too, because it can be little things and big things. Yeah, but I, I mean, agree with we could talk about the Tessa situation to give them an example. Because this is a, this is a this okay. is a mine and her situation, or Denisha and I situation. I want to say mine and her. This is Denisha and I situation, where we took my oldest brother, my little cousins, on a um to test drive a Tesla because he never experienced it, and it's uh, my little cousin's favorite car. So mm-hmm. I was like. Me and, me and Denisha drove it before, so I was like, huh, let's try it. Because I want to see, one, I wanted to fulfill their, you know, yeah. that's, that was their goal, to be in a Tesla, see they what it feels excited. like. Man, yeah. it was beautiful, though. I really, it was really fun. It but was. Huh? It was. Yeah, but back to the story. So the story was, <clears throat> I was driving a Tesla, so they can get a feel of, no, no, no. Yeah, I drove it a little bit. And yeah, then, tell them the time frame and everything that you have to test drive. Oh, to true. So let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. So we got to Tesla. They was talking to us, and they and then a uh, lady, I forgot her name. She told me that okay, you have thirty minutes. We don't have a specific route, long as you bring the Tesla back in thirty minute time frame. So that was the agreement. So when we left the parking lot, I went to like the closest store, kind of the clo- yeah, the closest store. And then that's when I swapped and let my oldest brother drive it. And then when I let him drive it, um, I was like, we got we got 30 minutes. So in that 30 minutes, we have to actually drive it and make it back in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And But, okay, so this happened. And then when he was driving it, I was letting him try the different things, the um, autonomous driving, so it can drive by itself, so he could see what that was like. The speed. Now, the Tesla was fun, and I get it. But that lock on that speed, mm-hmm. it locks at 80. Understandably so. Yeah, because you want to, I mean, one, we don't own the vehicle, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And for their safety and to keep people from getting tickets. Mm-hmm. So I get it. But at the same time, it's like, damn, it take away. But it didn't take away enough for us not to enjoy the uh, the um drive. No. So as I let my older brother drive, he was on... Um, we were driving. We went a good distance, and like we were just, sure did. we did karaoke and everything in there. Karaoke, karaoke. Car- yeah, karaoke. We did. Um, my little cousin wanted to hear the little fart sound, so we did that. Um, uh, what else we do in it? We basically just drove it, yeah. and it was fun because the karaoke it actually shows the uh, lyrics on the screen, so you can actually sing it mm-hmm. or rap it, and Vibe. it actually had uh, up to date music. Yeah, it was crazy. So, it was fun. So, we was having so much fun that we lost track of time. When we lost track of time, when I finally put it in the GPS, it was saying we was like 20 minutes away. But that was going to put us 10 minutes late. So, I was like, oh, I messed up. And then that's when uh, Denisha, she was like, yeah, I thought about saying something, but I did it. And me and my brother looked back like, why didn't you say nothing? And then she was, she said why she said. What well, I need to say anything for yeah, because one thing that I'm working on now is time management, knowing 
I'm working on exiting. So yeah. that's whether it's communication, like talking with people, like how to exit. Because when I'm in the moment, I stay there until that person exits. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm working on is exiting. And she recognizes that. And that's why she didn't say nothing because she was like, that's what I'm working on. So I need to work on my exit. And that's what she's saying. Like that goes back into what we was talking about with saying no, because you have to let people fall. And that yeah. was her not saying nothing to see. This is why you need to pay attention. Even when you're having fun, you still need to pay attention to time. So that was on me. Of course, in the moment I was upset, but I wasn't mad. It was just like a little upset because I mean, a little she was irritation. Right. Yeah, but she was right. Mm-hmm. And we did make it to the, uh, back to the dealership late, but it was no problem. Nah, it wasn't a problem. At it all. wasn't a problem at all. <laughs> Yeah. That has to do with, since you said you're working on your communication, letting go of your old self, yeah, becoming the new version of yourself. Yeah. And uh, when we say let go of your old self, it's not like, okay, you just, that person has been broken down and doesn't exist anymore at yeah. all. It's just like you're evolving. That's the best way I can say it. You're evolving into the next person. Yeah. Because, of course, you're still going to have traits, but yeah. it's just... Our goal is just to become a better version of better version than what we were before or mm-hmm. who we were before. So as we evolve, we try to you're going to I mean, it happens. We're human. We're not going to be perfect in this evolution. I would say this evolution process. Yeah. So we're going to be there's going to be times where we go back. But it's what we do next when we go back. Like when we go back into a situation, it's really what you do in that situation. Is what determines what happens next. So yeah. you have to, you just have to do what you need to do to help push yourself forward. Even if you fall back, don't, like I said, you don't move backwards unless you, hold on. Why did I try to make a quote? Why did I try to make a quote? I try you to always say, try to make a little quote. You don't move backwards. Oh, if you move backwards, you're not backwards if you think backwards. It's mm-hmm. about if you think forward, then you're still moving forward. You just happen to go back, but you just gotta be aware. Yeah, it's just your mindset when you step back into that. But yeah, you just really gotta be aware of your um, habits. You be aware of your goals. Yeah, be aware of situations. So when you are put into situations, and like you said, if you faced with that, like, and you you notice, like, okay, I did go a little back. You can always make a decision to to go forward. You're not stuck in that zone. And it's okay to move backwards too sometimes, you know, as far as like like that, for example. That wasn't like a serious situation. We were just Mm -hmm. having fun. But it's just an example, obviously. So it's um I feel like when you're growing, it's not about being hard on yourself, but it's about holding yourself accountable. Yeah. More than anything. It's not like you got to punish yourself for not doing things, but you do have to hold yourself accountable. And I feel like that's what's the hard, one of the hardest parts about growing up is that you have to hold yourself accountable because you're so used to other people doing it. Your parents really holding yeah. you accountable. So now that you just like out here, you just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the I think that's why people fall into habits so easily once they get past a certain age. Uh, it's because they know all their decisions are on them. But I feel like at the same time, they don't understand that you're accountable for the decisions that are on you, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, and I was I speak about I don't know everybody gets to this point. <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. Um work. Oh, probably. I know everybody gets to that point at different times in their life. I feel like you go through this part a lot in your 20s because it's a very, it's like, <clears throat> it's a very, I don't want to say awkward. It is an awkward place, though. Being in your 20s is a very awkward place because you're you're an adult, <clears throat> but you're not an adult. Yeah. Like, there's so much stuff you still do not understand the gravity of. There's so much situation, and, and this is the part that fucks me up. I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. It's like you looked at as an adult, but I'm gonna speak for me personally. You looked up, uh, you're looked at as an adult, but I don't feel like an adult all the way. And what I mean by that is like, 
people have certain expectations of you at a certain age. Like yeah. you're twenty, you're twenty seven, so you must got you understand what's going on. You must got your shit together, whatever the situation is. But I'm looking like no, nigga, I am confused, and I feel like sometimes people don't look back at that age from their selves, so they understand who they're you're t- the the age you're talking to. It's like, of course, the number when you hear the number. And like I said, I'm just talking about myself. myself. If you hear the number 27, you have a certain outlook. But if you go back and then look at yourself at 27, that's a different outlook. It's not the same thing. Because of course you want to as you of course you want to be at a certain point in your life, but we have brainwashed ourselves a lie. <laughs> we have and the reason I say it is because when I was younger, um, I want to do this by this age. I want to do this by this age. I want to do this by this age. Tell me if it happened. Hell no. Yeah. That's what I mean by that. Like, and that's why I feel like it has to do with letting go of your old self too, because letting go of those expectations of certain things, expectation. I'm just talking about time at this point, expectations of things happening on time because your timing is your timing. So, I'm sorry if I went on a rant, but that just popped into my head too. No, everything you're saying, man. Yeah, because it's just a it's a weird place to have people look at you as an adult, and you don't and you look at the people around you like, nigga, we're not adults. <laughs> we're we're yeah. figuring it out. It's, the thing about your twenties, it's like you're seen as an you're seen as an adult, but you're not respected as an adult for one. That's true. Because you're still seen as being young in a job field where there's older people, you're still seen like you're still looked at as a kid. Yeah. Um, but the roles that they put on you is an adult role. Yeah. And they expect you to follow through with it with no type of leniency. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of contradictions. Yeah. So as a as your twenties, it's a lot of adapting. It's yeah. a lot of learning. It's a lot of figuring out how to move. How to how you want to see yourself in certain positions or how you want to see yourself, uh, how you want to see yourself move in a certain, in certain positions or certain environments and stuff like that. It's a lot of yeah. seeing what you want yourself to be or how you want to be perceived. Yeah. And in your twenties, it's a lot of figuring that out right away because when you're around a lot of different types of people, a lot of different type of people is going to look at you differently. Yeah. So you have to figure out, how to move in those and figure out who you are as you're doing that because this is your first you time. Be. Yeah, because it's your first time being possibly you're just out of school yeah. for one or you could be just going into school, fresh out of high school. Yeah. And then you're around a lot of people that accomplished a lot of things that you may, I would say you may uh, have, may ha- hold on, what? Are you talking about like may have looked up to? I was going to say, you may see people who um, excelled in things that you, uh, in careers you possibly wanted to pursue. That's what I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And stuff like that. You see how Our they goals are. in general. Yeah. And that can open you up to see, like, damn, he looked drained. Or she going through it. I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah. So, and it's just, it's a lot of learning. A lot, a lot, a lot. A Life lot, is lot, about, and, and that's the thing. In your 20s, you learn so much. Yeah. And that's why... I, that's the biggest age. That To me, that's the most learning. Well, no. Uh, yeah, that's the most learning and... Uh, one, learning yourself, people, and stuff like that. I feel like the, your 20s is the biggest to that. I feel like it opens... I feel like your 20s opens your eyes a lot. Yeah. And I know every stage of life changes and you have a different outlook. But just because that transition from child to adult is seems so quick yeah it, it seems is. so quick because like i said i never wanted to grow up anyway i didn't see the hype about it i wasn't like when i was younger i was like i can't wait to be an adult no i never thought that way i was good yeah so the fact that this is <laughs> adulthood this shit is mind-blowing it's just it's not and when it's just if you're in your 20s i feel like you understand what we're saying yeah. because you're at a point where it's like you want to succeed, you know, you want to become whatever you want to become, but you, 
it's like you're pulled back from it. It's just like there's so much contradiction happening. It's so mm-hmm. much. It's it's almost almost overwhelming to a point. Like okay, okay, I gotta do this. Okay, okay. It's so much. It's just so yeah. much. And there's a lot of things that when you're going through it, you think it's really important when it's not at all. Yeah. Because it's just so new to you. Everything is foreign to you, pretty much. And you yeah. have to decode it yourself because, well, no. It's going to be a lot of people around you that's telling you uh, how to decode it, what it is, and stuff like that. Or, But you really have to look at it yourself and make it make it what you want, to, want it to be. Because a lot of people going to have different perspectives on a lot of things, on jobs, on careers, of on course, yeah. life. Like, they're going to say, oh, don't do this because this, this, this can happen. And somebody can yeah. say, oh, I love it. And it's easy. And this, this has happened to me. <clears throat> so you have to really take in what they say, but actually create your own outcome. Because yeah. Yeah. their outcome is not going to always be your outcome. How yeah. they see things, what they went through, the people they talk to, and they say, well, this go to me. I think you should avoid that person because they did me wrong and stuff like that. But when you talk to that person, you can find out that the reason they did them wrong was because of the things that they did. Yeah. So you just, yeah. it's a lot, a lot, a lot. Of, that's what she. That's what I got out of when you said it's a lot of contradiction, a lot of. It's a lot. It's just a lot of underlying, th- underlying things. Yeah. And there's, uh, yeah, and and I, when you're in your twenties, you're gonna let go a lot of sides of yourself. Yeah. To go into another <clears throat> version of yourself, but you shouldn't let go of everything. In my opinion, I will never let go of being a child to a certain extent. And when I like, you yeah. know, the curiosity, the having fun. Um, yeah, because some people take life too serious. Some people do take life, like... I mean, but from their perspective, it could be a serious thing, too. And I get it. I'm not no saying fun. life is it. Life is just weird. It's really life is a game, it. though. It's really I noticed what you that. make it. it. Life is what you make it, and then, of course, there's certain things you cannot control. I understand that. But um, when you're in... That's why I feel like it's so difficult when people have this, like... And I'm just talking about, what do you want to do when you grow up? Yeah. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Uh, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Uh, and then you next year you might want to do something different, and that's the thing. You and I feel like that's the hard, another hard part about your twenties because you like you say you want to do X, Y, and Z, and then when you change your mind, people look at you like you're crazy. Like you're supposed to change your mind. Like that's what your twenties are about. That's what living life is about. As you have more experiences, you make different decisions. You come to different outcomes. You can't hold anybody to one solution or yeah. or one thing because people are multifaceted and you deserve to make different decisions. You yeah. have the right to change your mind. Why do you think people get burnt out? Because they've been um, most time people have an expect they choose something right and they mm-hmm. do that thing because everybody has the expectation of them to do that thing then when they act doing that thing like a lot they go they become depressed they become confused they just feel lost yeah. because they've been following a goal set maybe by them or set by other people and now they're lost yeah and that's what I was going to say about that's what I love about this generation because the opportunities is limitless. Yeah. But the people before us, they don't understand how the opportunity opportunities is so limitless. They want you to still stick to what was uh, normal for them. Get a Tradition. job, get a house, have a family, yeah, and save money. That's what they want. But they don't understand or see that, no, this is a different generation. And this type of life, like, don't, let your mind be closed into cert into certain things because that's how other people see it. Yeah, it's all right to think outside the box, even if people don't agree with you. There, people don't agree with you because they don't understand it, and some do understand it, but they don't agree with it because they couldn't do it too, to be honest. But really, it's okay to step outside the box, Excuse do things me. that is brand new that nobody else have ever done in your family and your right. circle in general. It's just step out of it. Like step out of it's your comfort completely zone. okay. Mm-hmm. Because I tell you, I've always been, I, since I've been out of high school, I've always, and I didn't notice it. Well, I noticed it now, but at that time I didn't notice how much I wanted to become, uh, self-developed. 
versus being with a job. I've always what tried do to do self-develop? self-develop in the business world as I don't want to just work a nine to five. That schedule does not sit well with me. Like to give you all this time and then I have to request time off mm-hmm. to possibly get denied when I've worked the schedule that you've asked me. Well, technically you ain't asked me a schedule that you set for me on a consistent basis, but for me to have a day off of off of my original schedule, I have to request it and it can possibly be denied. That don't sit well with me because I'm like 365 days a week. And if I work five days a week uh, with you, I'm only off two days a week for 52 weeks Mm -hmm. in a year. And I can't request a week. I have to request a week off. That don't make sense to me. I don't, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't with the vibes all the way yeah, either. I, I, I don't like the having to rely, I don't like the fact of having to rely on one source of income. That too. Like, that don't sit right with me. It doesn't. Like, for me, um, since I've been out of high school, I've tried, uh, well, I've done like Amway, I've done network marketing. Yeah, I've done, yeah, different types of network marketing and stuff like that. And it didn't. The other one, you only did that one. Well, no, hold on. No, yeah, I did Amway. No, I didn't do Legal Shield. I just talked with them. Yeah. I didn't actually do it. So yeah, but I've been in. I've been in different groups. Well, I want to say been in. I've witnessed different groups uh-huh. of network marketing. And with Amway, I was in that for a little minute. And I may not have been successful or made money out of it, but I learned a lot from it. Like it yeah. taught me the importance of consistency. It taught me. The importance of having a team. It it taught me like the importance of networking, of meeting new people, and actually seeing like what they have going on in their life. Because you never know, they may need help with something, and you can be that help, and or that you may need help in something, and they can be that help for you. You just never know. The and when you're doing that work marketing, you um had to let go of a version of yourself. To be comfortable with that to a certain... Not comfortable, but with reaching out to other people you normally wouldn't, too. Yeah, because you have to talk to random people. Exactly. Because we used to... Me and Deontay, we used to cold contact. Yeah. That was crazy to think about stuff like that. Like, we actually used to go to malls and stuff, have the product on hand and actually randomly talk to uh, uh, people about energy drinks and mm-hmm. have them try it and stuff like that and try to uh, sell products. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool, though. That's what I'm when you think back on it, I mean, when you when you're in the moment, you're a nervous wreck. But <laughs> in the when you're in the moment, once you look back on it, it, it's it's nice to see like for me like the things that I've done, even though like you may not have seen success in it, but I've seen success in it. It don't have to just be monetary gain. It can be something I just learned. Learning can be success. So growth, yeah, knowledge. Yeah. For sure. So Oops. I de- definitely learned a lot from it. So I do appreciate the lessons. And I'm, I'm not now. I'm not saying, yeah, go ahead. Jump on uh, jump on Anway. Jump on uh, Legal Shield. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying just from me personally being in Amway, not Legal Shield. I would just, I went to like one or two business meetings of that. But just being in Amway and seeing the people that were successful and how it worked for them, like what made them successful. That's what taught me like the importance, like I said before, the importance of a team and having an organization together and, and being around like-minded individuals who have the same passion and goals as yours. But you know, everybody have their own path, but you still meet somewhere where y'all can work together and build something together. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. And that has to do with, like, okay, because I want to tie it back into this because mm-hmm. even though he's not recommending people to go do uh, network marketing, X, Y, and Z, but what I hear him saying is put, but putting yourself into situations you normally wouldn't, yeah. it allows you to grow for yeah. sure. Because, and that's why I told him, I told him he should try sales just to see it, how that is. Cause he did it technically already with network marketing, but um, I ain't never, I ain't have to force a sale though. Yeah, so that's that, that. Well, you didn't. No. How did you get sales then? Oh, they just said yes. 
I didn't get much sales. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few, but I didn't get much. Yeah. Um. So, I I told him he should do a like a sales. I'm not saying he has to do it forever, but um, try sales even if it's, it's a sales job or something with sales, because that gives you a different outlook on yourself too. Yeah. Because you are tasked to ask people for money. People are not always comfortable with asking somebody for money. People are not comfortable with approaching people um, in a certain situations. So for me, I hmm, I worked at a Chinese food restaurant and I would upsell, but I wouldn't have to sell all the way because they came in there for a reason. Um, but more when I went to mattress firm, it was about selling and then upselling. Even though they came in here for a reason, most people come in, they just browsing. And yeah. I, I was taught by with another associate named O'Shea. O'Shea's had an amazing personality. He was a great salesperson. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he's doing great things now. Because um, he got fired, which is crazy to me. Um, anyways, that position forced me to ask people for money. And not just say, like, yeah, so you want to buy it? <laughs> yeah. Not like that. It's like you have to be strategic. You have to make people feel comfortable. You have to let them make the think, well, let them think they're making that decision or create value to uh, do it. Because that's what we were taught to do, create value, and everything follows from there. Yeah. Which, that's what I did most of the time. And most people sell things to themselves because people would come in there I, I didn't I never forced anybody to make a sale. I would tell them, Well, it's up to you, whatever you think is best. You should go somewhere else and shop around and come back here if you want, just try it out. We have X, Y, and Z, whatever you're comfortable with. I ain't gonna lie to ya. I worked at that job almost two years. Um I I had probably I think one return and I feel I forgot the reason why. I had working there almost two years and that position made me more comfortable with approaching people too. Yeah, um, and I put you on the top list too. What? When you was at, when you was there at the time, you had the least amount of returns for the time you was there. Yeah, but it didn't count because I was part time. Yeah, but but it still was true though. Yeah. Um. So yeah, <clears throat> when you put yourself in situations like that, it allows you to show a different side of yourself or to build up a weak part of yourself, if you want to say that. Because a lot of people focus on their strengths, but no. Yeah, a lot of people focus on their strengths. A small number of people focus on their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Because your weaknesses, they hurt. So it's like, it it, it doesn't feel as good when you um, win in, uh, I'm sorry, lose in something you're weak at. Because like, yeah, that makes sense. So when you put yourself in those situations, Mm -hmm. it allows you to grow and let that part of you kind of die off because it's like, if I can get past my weakness, you know, I can do anything. Yeah. Really. So, yeah. Yeah, your weaknesses. Put some strength behind them and you're going to see some differences. For sure. For sure. <clears throat> like. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't mean to. Yeah, she's. Up. She's not fresh off of work, but she get off early, early in the morning, and we're not, rec- and we're still recording pretty close to the morning. Um. But uh, what I was gonna say about the weakness? Oh, that's what I was saying. Yeah, your weaknesses can surprise you for sure because when you work on your weaknesses long enough, the thing about human anatomy is when you start doing things that's repetitive, it will start to become muscle memory, and you will start being able to, you will start to be able to do it without thinking too much. Versus when you're first learning something, it start off as a weakness. Well, some people start things first time and be good at it, but it start off as a weakness most of the time. Mm-hmm. But then once you continue at it, you naturally get better because you keep doing it and muscle memory. It. Yeah. So as you get, as you learn your, uh, as you learn, you start to remember as well. And then once you start to remember without having to think about it, that's how you tend to get better without noticing you're getting better. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's why working on your weaknesses is important because like for me, for example, being an introvert, <clears throat> being to myself a lot and now I'm putting myself around people, 
now me thinking, okay, I need to hold a conversation. What can I say next? What should I say next? Uh, 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 now required. It's an awkward, it's an awkward silence. A silence. To me, it's an awkward silence, but to them, it's normal. So, or they may be used to talking to people like me. So it just the way you think about it. Like when I'm in a situation, of course, going through it, I didn't know what to say. So it was like it felt like anxiety and stuff like that was building up. But then as I kept putting myself into those situations, my anxiety actually started to decrease. I started to say things more. I started to show more personality, more like laughing a little more, saying a little more like joking a little more instead of being like, I don't want to say too serious because it's not that I'm serious, but it's just I don't show my uh, uh, comedic side. Yeah, like you don't see me. You don't see a lot of me. So now I'm starting to show a lot of me and it's starting to become normal and as it's becoming normal i'm starting to like it more because it's like i'm actually doing what used to give what used to give me anxiety now brings me joy yeah so you can turn things around like that for yeah, sure it doesn't feel not, like it in the moment it's not easy i'm no. not gonna sit there and say this was this is not an overnight thing this is not a weekly thing this i mean depending on you it can change in those times but for me it's, it was a process, but it was a process that's well worth it because, I mean, it took me years. But for me to get better at showing my personality from once I started getting comfortable, it started taking like weeks. It was it started to, like the process started to speed up. Mm-hmm. And they go look at our old videos. Yeah. Like if you watch our old videos, you will see how I talk into the camera. Ah. You will see now from these last probably like four or five podcasts, I've actually been talking more. i actually been kind of cutting conversations and actually speaking and not just analyzing and listening because I love to listen to what's being said and actually take information in. But I tend to not speak information out, like mm-hmm. say what I get, what you're saying or what points. I mean, when me and Denisha have conversations one on one, of course I do. But on camera or around other people, I tend to just back sit off. back. And just listen. Yeah. And then may ha- maybe have the conversation with her later on. Um, but, yeah, now I'm talking in circles. But, yeah, it's really important, though, because once you do it, man, and you look back on it and see, I remember how it made me feel. But now, how I feel now, it was worth it. Because even though it took me a month or years, those months and years going to pass anyway. That so part. why not just do it? Just work on it. It may take time, but so be it. I mean, you're going to go through that time anyway. You're either going to go through that time trying or you, you're you going to go through that time doing nothing. I'd rather go through that time trying and figuring it out than just letting the time pass me wishing that I was doing this more or carrying myself more or being talkative more. Instead, just in those moments, I try to speak more. It's going to be awkward. It may, it may look awkward, but it don't matter because it's you going through your process. No matter yeah. what people think, it's like, okay, you're going to think of it, think of me like that now, but as soon as we talk later, you're going to be like, dang. Yeah. Or they won't even remember confident. sometimes yeah. that because you've grown to so much. And you know what's funny about that? Because I'm going to talk about a situation where that happened when we have the conversation with, um, no, when Mr. Calvin called you. Uh, what happened in that conversation? When when Mr. Calvin called you and you was looking at me to oh to help me yeah to help yeah. you oh and I God. didn't and I didn't help him on purpose because, <laughs> and he was he was upset he was very mad he was and but this has to do with <laughs> what we talked about earlier remember when we was talking about the tough love oh boy or <clears throat> I was stuck he was I, real stuck and I did that on purpose. Man. And I don't, I still don't regret doing it. I mean, it was a little painful to watch. I ain't gonna lie to you. But yeah. sometimes you gotta do that. You're gonna sink and swim. Like sometimes people th- throw people in the water. Yeah. And he said, it is, it will, I ain't gonna say it is what it is, but that had to be. It had, sometimes it situations necessary. like that have to happen. Yeah, for sure. Because you have to, you gotta go through a situation like, you can't look for people to protect you. You got to know how to survive. Yeah. So that was just a survival moment for me to where... He was mad, yeah. He was mad at me. Excuse me. You know, like in the in a animal kingdom, when they teach their, they teach them how to hunt, and then they just shoot them off and let them hunt on their own. Mm-hmm. It ain't no guarantee you're going to survive this, but you got to do it, even though that's more... Uh, intense. Yeah, more but intense. But still, it was... 
Um, Same scenario, because anxiety and stuff like that can make you feel like a uh, thousand things is happening at one time to you, and in reality, nothing's really happening. It's I all remember. I'm trying to remember. I had made him upset one day when I told him. I forgot exactly what I said, but it was basically like you just got to do it. That's because I was like, you just got to do it. Most things come down to that. You just got to do it. It sounds bad. It sounds mean. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm trying to remember. Um, I, I think it had remember. to do around that situation when I with that. I don't know. It was it was around the same time frame, but I I I, I know I said something along the lines of you just got to do it, and because some people, this is the complicated part about this situation. Um, and it's not just with him, just in general. How do you get out of a situation? You tell me the answer. How do you get out of a situation? You do something about it. So if that's the basis of getting out of a situation, then that's the answer to the situation. And what I mean by that example, if like that, okay, he he was, he told me he wanted to get better at communication. Somebody called him who was supposed to mentor us, mentor him. Yeah. Um, now you in it. Mm-hmm. Now you got to do it. But you feel like I'm failing. You feel like I'm falling. And then afterwards, and then I tell you, well, you just, you got to keep trying. Yeah. Because yeah. there'll always be, it hurts. It's, I was going through it'll it. It'll always be a reason for you not to do it, to stop. But you have to do something about it. Excuse me. Because if not, you're just going to end up in the same situation. Because, of course, you don't want to face something that makes you feel all these bad ways about yourself. Because now you feel like, depressed, you feel sad, you feel like, oh, I'm not worthy or whatever. Um, but if you have, if you're depressed, mm-hmm. how do you get out of depression? And I'm not saying this in a simple way. I understand depression is not simple. Yeah. Do not take it this way. But I'm saying if you are depressed, what do you do? You do something to not be depressed. What that is, is up to you. I understand some people are chemically de- chemically depressed. It's, I'm not saying every situation is exactly the same. But it comes to a point of making a decision for most people who are capable. Okay? If I know m- myself, I just speak about me. If I know I have anxiety talking to people and I don't want to have that anymore, do I not talk to them or do I go talk to them? Because that's the only solution. I keep lying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Cause we both. It, you have to let so go of that. That old version of yourself of the person who is is like okay I can't I can't you have to start believing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you don't start believing till you start doing. Sometimes you don't believe when you're doing it until you look back. Yeah, and that's another crazy thing. Sometimes you don't see the results you've made even when you look back, but you know you're in a better place. Yeah, that's why it's important sometimes to track those things. That's why some people journal. Yeah. So they can look back and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That's why these videos are cool, too. Yeah, to look back on it, because all this recording, if you go back to the first videos, man. Yeah, he was was struggling. (laughs) Even on that intro. (laughs) Even on the intro, our intro. Here we go. Here we go again. Yeah, I, I had no energy. I was just, I didn't know what to do. It's just because, man, it was just so awkward to me. It is. It is a. It is weird though to talk to a camera. It's a. That's an adjustment in itself to start talking to a camera. But this helps. I think might have helped you with your communication to a certain extent. It did. Cause you got to talk consistently, and I know deep down, I'm not gonna lie to you. This the truth. I don't be wanting to cut too much, so I be like, man, you better get this out in one take. Whatever you be trying to explain, you better explain it good the first time. So the more, the better you explain, <laughs> <laughs> the less you have to edit. <laughs> Sound good? Sound good. Solution. Yeah. So now I try to one take Drake. <clears throat> That's funny. Say what I need to say. Say it clear. Say it good. Try to say it with the best understanding, like the simplest way to understand as possible. Mm-hmm. Because my mind goes, do, 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 so I try to break it down into the simplest form. For so sure. So when I say it, it can be understood right away. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. We all are out here learning, trying to figure ourselves out and evolve mm-hmm. into the best version of ourselves. And I hope you out there trying to evolve into the best version of yourself because it'll be worth it at the end of the day. You don't want to stay the exact same person you've always been. Yeah. Because that's just that's stagnant right there. You have to be, you have to change. How do you not change going through life? Mm-hmm. And like I said, that doesn't mean you change every part of yourself, but you have experiences that force you <coughs> to change sometimes. So. Yeah. You're still okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's what I did. I'm still okay. Oh my God. I think it was that medicine I took that made me sleepy. I ain't gonna it's lie to you. Medicine? Yeah. Today? Yeah. Uh, what? What medicine did you take? I took uh, ibuprofen. It make you sleepy? Uh, yeah, I guess it do. I ain't realize until I took well, it. I guess we're gonna be working together. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, what else that's all I can think of. It all right now. I only looked up to make sure. <clears throat> um. Yeah, yeah. Let go of who you used to be to be who you need to be, to be the person you were born to be, really. And sometimes that's not going to look like who you thought it would either. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah. People may see you as changing or you're not the same. That's because you're not meant to be the same. And it's okay to we change. Meant for growth. You can't. <laughs> I remember when my mama and Calvin said, I changed. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? Because it sounds so bad when people say stuff. Oh, you changed. Because you're not who they used to. How could you not, though? You know, people That's change. It's okay. Yeah. Some people, when they see you change, they look at it as a bad bad thing, too. Like, I wouldn't say they look at it as, like, a bad thing, but they look at it in not a good way, I guess. It looks, it's say. looked at negatively. Yeah. But when I, that's not, it's not meant to be that way. It's just when you change it and your toleration of certain things gets lower and it tends to go towards people, then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't like that. It is. It, I can say it is what it is, but you know, I know, I'll, t- I'll speak with myself. I know the person I'm changing into is not a negative thing. I'll yeah. say that. I know it's not. No, it's not at all. I know because I'm not a I'm not that type of person in general. I've never been that type of person, mm-hmm. and I won't be that type of person. Yeah, I uh, just gonna throw the question this off what we're talking about, but <clears throat> I was gonna ask from you becoming an adult. How do you see like what was your what is your thoughts on adults from you being a kid to seeing adults <laughs> to becoming an adult? And now you see them, it's not too far from you. Well, I want to say not too far from you, but as the, at the age you are now from as a kid, I keep trying to say the same thing over and over again. All right, from you looking at adults as a kid to growing up and now being an adult and seeing the people that you looked up to as a kid, what do you think of them now? Um, yeah, all kids out here. Yeah. Ain't nobody really grown y'all pretending. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah, just a yeah, just older. Yeah. Same. <laughs> it, that's yeah. what because it's funny though because when you're a kid, of course it's like they're adults. Yeah. But we all out here trying grow, to figure this just shit a big out. Kid. Hmm? An adult is just a big kid. That's Every it. level you get to is just an older kid. Yeah. You are. You are, and it's okay. It's okay to a certain extent, unless you're a mean kid. Um. <laughs> well, no, there are some people where you'd be like, "Oh, you're an adult." Like the people that take life serious. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you ain't playing. Should yeah, I like this? you can't even. Exp- you can't even. <clears throat> that's fifteen miles. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, you can't even think of what I was gonna say. Oh. I say you can't even think of. It's free service. That's yeah. Even, that's only. But that's 21 miles though that's only seven dollars more yeah um, um but yeah y'all yeah. out here trying to figure it out i know yeah but some people oh but like this guy on oh, copart yeah this is a, the guy i work with at amazon because you know when you go inside amazon you start talking to people yeah and he was we were in the same group together mm-hmm. and me talking to him i'm like you seem like an adult that's funny 
Yeah. <laughs> like you said, like, get your shit together. Yeah. The way he be talking. And he stands up so straight. Yeah. Man, he be talking about, it's yeah. It's crazy how, as a, because a lot of them is trained like that as children. Mm-hmm. To sit up, pro, like, sit up straight. He's a physical how, therapist, though. Uh, so that makes sense. Yeah. But you're right. <laughs> It's crazy when you think about stuff like that. Because I be thinking, like, do you want your kids to live life that serious? I don't, I don't want my kids to live life either. too serious. I definitely want them to. And when I say kids, the older they get. To, yeah. to always have a sense of curiosity. To not let people take your joy away. To have fun. Because you have to have fun in life. Not everything has to be so serious. serious. Yeah, like, some people look at life like, this is no joke. What we do, we got to leave. For our next kids, we gotta do this. We gotta do that. We gotta do this. We gotta do that. We gotta basically make sacrifices. I mean, I feel that. Yeah, make sacrifices, do that. But that don't mean you gotta be serious the whole time. That's nah. why they be looking so dead in the face. Like it just <laughs> over. Like not dead in the face. No, I feel I'm it. Not lying. Like they just like tired, exhausted. It's like you're not. I mean, I get it. I don't understand that lifestyle and stuff. I mean, their type of life and stuff like that. But it's like, man. People can find joy out of nothing, though. Yeah. It's just, you really have to just find joy. Enjoy, like, don't just see it as being so serious. Because when you, you only got one life. Mm-hmm. After this life, is done. So you, you gonna go to heaven and say, I live my life serious. Right. You could have, you can live your life serious with a purpose and still have fun. Still find joy in it. I'm gonna have fun. Regardless, yeah. ain't nobody gonna take my... <clears throat> laughter away nobody gonna make me think of everything has to be Heck so no. serious cause Mm-mm. it don't it don't need to be that serious everybody gonna meet the same destination but everybody gonna just go through different things yeah at, to when they meet in the same destination it ain't gonna change the destination from you being serious and you playing yep yeah I mean, just I, enjoy the process that's how I see it it's not that you're not supposed to be serious in certain situations but you don't have to <laughs> live your whole life like so the whole Strict time. discipline, can't do this, can't do that. Da, 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 da. Nah, gotta have fun, gotta have fun. Balance is important. Yeah, <laughs> life is about balance. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like there is a time to play, there is a time to be serious, but there is you could play in some serious moments too. I'm gonna just say that. Yeah. Some people say that. So why are you playing? I mean, but I, I I do that too though. In certain situations, I do tend to take more serious, and then when you're playing, I be like, why are you playing? I be playing a lot. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Especially with things I don't understand or things I'm really concentrating on. I tend to, like, when I'm serious in certain things, I don't want no plan going around me. Yeah. She yeah. Because I be uh, projecting it on her sometimes. Don't project on <clears throat> me. Don't project on me. Don't project on me. That's how you had auto tune on. Don't. Still do? That was disgusting. <laughs> I still do? Yeah. Cause you be uh, why are you sing that way? Uh, why you so you uh, doing that? Because, yeah. ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> that was disgusting. Oh, nineteen nineteen dollars seven units. Seven. Oh, you could take that. But it's six point seven miles. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's, not bad. That's target. Target. All right, y'all. So we about to go work, and then I gotta go work again. So yeah, she's she gonna work and then work. So you ain't gonna do too much work then, cause you don't want to drive tired. Nah. <clears throat> so uh, you only gonna make a little bit of money. And then you yeah, I'm probably gonna make a little bit, but yeah, yeah. We appreciate y'all for coming back to the channel mm-hmm. because the tribe is here. And oh, we forgot to say this is Vlogmas Day. Oh, 12. wow. That's funny. It's okay, though. This um, is Vlogmas Day 12. Uh, we appreciate y'all tuning in. We're kind of starting to see what kind of content y'all like or prefer. So, yeah, I'm I'm paying attention to that for sure. Yeah. I don't know what he paying attention. I can't speak for him. I don't know what he be paying attention to. Hold on, to. I'm paying attention to what? To what you saying yeah to. Uh, no, I heard you, <laughs> but then I forgot it. But when you said it, I'm going to remember it. Just say a little bit, and I'm going to tell you what to say. Videos. Damn, your eye twitching like... Because I'm trying to take it in. <laughs> <laughs> you jumping like a hoe. What are you talking about? Paying attention Shake it like a stripper. <laughs> Vlogmas? No, I was saying... T- 
I'm tr- I'm paying attention to the type of content we've been dropping to see the reaction of them watching it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as far as views, likes, and stuff, because those last reactions and stuff weren't doing too good. Nah. So, all right, y'all. But like we said, um, if y'all do want to see more reactions, put in the comments what type of reactions you want to see, so we can actually give our viewers, our tribe members, what they actually want. Because right now we're guessing. We just throwing it out. <clears throat> yeah, and then we're just testing the waters to see, okay, is the tribe, do the tribe like this? Okay, the tribe don't like this. Okay, so we drop another one. You tribe like that? Eh, it did okay. But, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just like, <laughs> people used to Ma still be doing that. <laughs> oh, they hit that little side profile there. <laughs> you know that ain't cute, right? <laughs> you know that's old people cooking. <laughs> How you try to be young taking old people pictures? Please explain. Like, uh, I'm even. I was just doing it. I won't talking about your mama. Taking MySpace pictures. My mama funny. still be taking MySpace pictures. You better leave your mama alone. <laughs> <laughs> with, her, with her shades on. I'm dead. <clears throat> Let's talk about it now. I'm dead. All right, y'all. She's going to text me. I know you ain't talking. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to start roasting me in text messages. Uh, yeah, that's funny. That was funny. All right, y'all, let's get out of here now. Yeah, if you like my hair, she did it. She retwisted it. You know what I'm saying? Baby, I tried. She twisted it. You know. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna she, get better. Yeah, you are. But you get. You got a lot better though. Is what I'm saying. She. This is her fourth time. She yeah. did real good. So if you want your dress retwisted, now nah, just play. If you want your dress retwisted, <laughs> hit me up. I got you fifty dollars. Oh, that's cheap. 50 to 150, really. Nah, 150, that's too much for a retwist. 150 if your hair is super long. That's how they did do me. Not retwist. Fuck it. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. That price sounds appealing. I, I can't, I can't, I can't tell her what the price is, but I tell her if I tell her if it's, I think it's too hot. But you heard what she and said. Hit me up if you want to do my hair. Nobody gonna hit you up on that one. Look at this. Nobody ever wanted my hair. I need to do my <clears> hair. I told her to just cut it off and go bald. I ain't <laughs> say nothing like that. She cut it off. Her hair gonna be shaped like a uh, gumdrop. <laughs> Killing the game. Yo, my forehead uh, ass ain't gonna talk about me. Go. All right. <laughs> Yo, caramelized crunch bar face. First of all, if you've had crunch bars, you y'all fucking crunch your complexion bar forehead. And then you got a... B- okay, yeah, my forehead is... God damn. Damn, <laughs> that shit... <laughs> <laughs> look, let me just lay these flaps back That shit look layered. <laughs> and they got a layered forehead. Start here. And <laughs> <You> go here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, let it shine. Let nah, it shine. Nah, nah, nah. Let it, it is, out. Let it that is, shit shine. Like that. That's why I got dressed. You feel me? Had this forehead. Man, let that forehead be. I got these just dropping down like a bang. You heard me? <laughs> oh, it's like it's like it's like you're doing a quick flash. Yeah, <laughs> see. Do it again. Nah, it's like, it's our white lips. You'll be alright. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse you. But yeah, we appreciate y'all for watching. And if you guys <clears throat> want to join the tribe, just subscribe. And if you a new subscriber, put in the comments. Ow. Hey, my name is such and such. I just Ow. Subscribe to join the tribe and we'll welcome you in. And if you don't know what tribe means, it means trying really is better every time. And if you're wondering what is the tribe, what is the goal of the tribe, or what do we do, tribe, <clears throat> tribe, tribe. <laughs> I have mucus in my throat. Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as I said in the beginning, tribe is here to encourage you, guide you, and push you to anything uh, to help mo- help you move forward with whatever you got going on, whether it's starting YouTube, creating your own business, or maybe you just have some things you want to talk about. Or getting through anxiety, getting through yeah. difficult conversations. It just that's the tribe. The tribe is just a commun is a the tribe is a community that just we try to do everything together. Like we try to like we want to talk together. We want to build together showcase things together it just that's what we hear it's family based and i don't know if i told you but if you don't know what tribe means it means trying really is better every time 
<clears throat> well, I just told him again. <clears throat> I do like that, though. Trying really is better every time. I'm about to get some merch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to some trap merch. Let us know. Even and we're going to drop that thing. We're going to drop that thing. I'm ready to go to sleep. We ain't going to sleep nothing. We finna work, 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 eh. and, and work, 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 and work, 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 yeah, I could dance, y'all, if y'all ain't know. If y'all want to see me doing the dance moves, let me know. I'll show you. But uh, we appreciate y'all for watching. I'm about to... Uh, should I... All right, y'all. We appreciate y'all for watching. See y'all on the next Tribe cast or reaction. You never know. But happy the vlogmas. The longest outro in the world. Number 12. Day 12. Day 12. Yes, day 12. And y'all have a great day, great night, wherever you're watching. And look, the plant is coming back to life. Peace. Because I put more water in it. It's growing. Yeah, and it's back it's up, back everybody. Up. The plant is back up. It's, it rose. It rose. Mm. Mm. All right, y'all. Bye. All right. I just wanted to freeze for a second. If you do that face one more time, end it with that face. <laughs>